Maybe you've heard the popular parenting idea that children learn by example. If your child sees you picking up after yourself or saying please and thank you, they start to pick up on those habits. But what if the example set is one of toxic behavior? How does someone unlearn what was instilled in them in childhood? That's what the woman in today's episode would find out. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. Just a heads up, today's episode might have some content that is not appropriate for our younger listeners. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a woman who saw the life her parents led and wanted better, but ended up choosing the same lifestyle. We'll see just who could show her a better example to live by on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Let's get to it, folks. It's part one of the true story of Candace Talbot. Why won't you stop trying? Just hush! Bill? Is that you? It's me. You said you'd be home hours ago. Job took longer than I thought. <sighs> Did you see Candy when you came in? The baby's diaper needs changing. Candy? Get in here! Oh, I didn't mean to stay in bed all day, but my head feels... Uh, it's, it feels... All fuzzy like. Nah, don't beat yourself up. You're doing the best you can. Well, Bill, I wish I didn't feel so bad all the time. I'm just, I'm gonna ask my doctor for a different medicine. Candy, you better get your skinny britches in here, or I swear you'll get another spanking. You hear me? Where is that girl? She's probably in her stupid hiding place. Check the kitchen pantry. <laughs> You had one thing to do, and that was to look after your baby brother. Now stand up! Please! Please don't make me! Why not? I didn't mean to! You wet yourself again, didn't you? I'm sorry! You disgust me, you know that? I'm, I'm sorry, Daddy! Please don't! No! No! The woman in our story grew up in a home filled with neglect and unreasonable expectations. She dreamed of the day that her problems would be behind her. She's about to find out that problems have a way of following us until we meet someone who has the power to set us free. We now bring you part one of the true testimony of Candace Talbot, right now on Unshackled. I was only eight years old that night, the night Daddy pulled me out of that closet and spanked me for failing to help my mother. I didn't understand it at the time, but Mom suffered from deep depression and a belief that she had every illness ever known to man. We could have opened a pharmacy with all the pill bottles she kept in her bedroom. As for Daddy, I suppose his anger issues were left over from his own childhood and never learning how to be a good parent. But I didn't understand all that as a child. I was too busy being the adult in the home. Candy? Yes, Mommy? Bring me a glass of water, will you? And fix a bottle for the baby. Be quick about it. So at the young age of eight, I fed, diapered, and raised my baby brother. And I did the same for the next brother who arrived two years later. I became the keeper of babies and the keeper of secrets. You look nice. You and Daddy going somewhere? <laughs> Your Daddy's too busy building houses to have any fun. Where are you going? I'm meeting someone. But none of your business, who? I doubt your dad will get home before I do, but in case he does... Hand me that lipstick over there, huh? In case he does, you tell him... You tell him I went shopping. You hear me? Now go change your brother's diaper. Ugh, I can smell it from here. Baby keeper and secret keeper. 
Seemed like all I ever did was babysit my brothers. When I became a teenager, my only free time was when I stayed overnight with my best friend Peggy. She was a breath of fresh air. And after a long night of fingernail polish and gossip, we would wake up to the delicious smell of fried sausage and buttery pancakes. Once our stomachs were full, we would walk to her church down the street. Hey, watch where you're driving. Where's your head, Candy? You almost stepped in front of that car and went straight to heaven. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah. You literally almost got hit. No, about going straight to heaven. Well, why wouldn't you? You believe in Jesus, don't you? Sure I do, but I don't feel good enough to meet him. Not yet, anyway. I just want to have some fun first. Oh, I know what fun you're thinking about. And that kind of fun will get you in big trouble if you let any boy... I know, I know. You've told me a hundred times already. Why are you working so fast? I don't want to be late for church. Can't we do something else instead? We're already here. <laughs> Come on. I'll race you to the door. Going to church and being religious suddenly seemed boring and no longer important to me. So I eventually stopped going. God seemed far away. So far away, I doubted he even noticed I was missing. The moment I turned 15, I ran as fast as I could into the world of dating and partying. I was desperate to do anything to escape my crazy home. Every chance I got, I filled my life with boys, alcohol, and more boys. It never dawned on me that I was making stupid choices that would have far-reaching consequences. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was repeating the same behaviors that my mother and father had made. My mother lacked a moral compass and I never realized that I desperately needed one. Candy! I didn't see you come in. You're looking bad in those bell bottoms. Thanks! Hey, you want another beer or something? I'm still working on this one. Let me know if you ever want to try something stronger. What? I can barely hear you. It's so loud in here. I know! Let's bail! Follow me! The backyard's much quieter. This is so much better. What were you trying to tell me? I was asking if you wanted to try something besides beer. What did you have in mind? Have you ever tried pot? I sell a little on the side. Sorry. I don't have any dough on me. You can always pay me with something else. <laughs> like what? Uh, maybe a kiss. Just a kiss? That's up to you. Want to go back to my pad and roll a joint? Sure, why not? All my friends are trying it. I promise you, you won't regret it. So I went back to his apartment, and one thing led to another, and then to another. No one ever plans to become addicted to alcohol or drugs or sex. But eventually, the cravings grip your mind to the point that that's all you think about. Somehow, even with all the partying, I managed to finish high school and go to a college on an island in Michigan. There I was sheltered and protected in a morally strong and very strict school for a year. A taste of a clean and rewarding life. It felt good to finally be free from family drama. But one night, a phone call changed everything. Hello? Candy, where have you been? Your brother and I have been calling your dorm room for hours. I was in class. What's going on? We can't get a hold of your mother. She's at some PTA convention. Why? Peggy, what's going on? It's your dad. He was in a motorcycle accident. He was going 60 miles an hour when some cop pulled out in front of him. It doesn't look good, Candy. You need to get on a plane and get back here as soon as you can. We'll find out where your mom is. I immediately packed an overnight bag. I had to wait for a boat to take me back to the mainland before I could head to the airport. I felt so frustrated because I wanted to be with him right away. There was nothing, nothing I could do but wait for the island ferry to show up. My heart felt like it was about to explode with worry. Down by the docks, 
I found a church that was open and went inside. It was years since I had spoken to God, but somehow I knew he was the only one who could help my dad. I sat down in one of the pews and poured out my heart. God, it's me. I hope you can hear me. I know my dad's been mean to me and hurt me, but, but he's still my dad. He's the only dad I have, and he needs your help right now. Please, let me get back in time to see him once more. Please, God, please don't let him die. Folks, we'll get back to Candace's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 73rd year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. Org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Candy's story. Are you Bill's daughter? Yes. Can I see my dad now? In a moment. Let's talk first. I want you to know that your dad's heavily sedated, so he's not in pain. That's good, right? Yes, but I need to warn you about how bad he looks. He broke a lot of bones when he hit that car. His breathing is shallow, five of his ribs had compound fractures. His pelvis, shoulder, and both feet were damaged as well. But he's going to recover, right? Candy, you need to be prepared that there's a chance he won't make it. His injuries are just too severe. Nothing the doctor told me could have prepared me for what I saw when I walked into that ICU. His helmet had broken the force of the impact, but it had left bruises all over his head before it flew off. Both legs and both arms were in traction. I had promised myself that I wouldn't cry, that I would stay strong for him. But the moment I saw him, the tears started to flow. Hey, Daddy. It's me, Candy. Sorry it took me so long to get here, but I'm here. I want you to know that I love you. You're strong, Daddy. You're the strongest man I've ever known, and I need you to not give up. We'll get through this. You're all busted up, but I'm praying. I'm begging God to heal you. Don't you dare leave me. Do you hear me? Okay, Dad? Dad? Daddy? Somehow, God answered my prayers. My dad survived all those injuries, but he never fully recovered all his mobility. This mountain of a man, who once built houses with a hammer and a saw, was reduced to a shadow of himself. He could build anything that had a blueprint, but he couldn't rebuild his broken body. A year after the accident, my dad declared bankruptcy while he and my mom looked for other means of income. My worries about my dad and all the partying eventually caught up to me. I dropped out of college and decided to marry this guy who was okay. There's no easy way to put this, so here goes. I married my drug dealer. I'll give you one guess how that worked out. Would you stop asking me if I found a job yet? 
I already have a job. Selling pot and pills and who knows what else is not a job, John. Of course it is. It pays for rent and food. What else do we need? I mean a real job so we could buy a decent car for me. What's wrong with the car you have? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'd like one with seat belts and without holes in the back floor. And maybe I'd like to have health insurance like normal people do. Oh, well, or maybe I'd like to stop supplying you with free drugs so I can sell them to people who actually pay for I them. I don't use drugs. Say that one more time. My ears are playing tricks on me. I said I don't use drugs anymore. Oh, yeah. Why not? Because I'm pregnant. Aren't you going to say something? Don't just stand there. Say something. You sure it's mine? Ugh. I stood there, too stunned to answer as he grabbed his jacket and went out the door. The moment he was gone, I broke down and sobbed. John had pressured me into having an open marriage, but I knew this baby was his. When I married John, I was so sure we could have a better marriage than my parents did. Of course, how many women take up with a guy convinced that once they're married, they can fix him and make him into something better? What was I thinking? It seemed like the drama in my life was never going to stop. Candy? Open up, Candy. Dad? What are you doing here? I just need someone to talk to. Is it okay if I... Sure, come inside. Dad, what's going on? Everything. An hour ago, I was driving up and down the mountain looking for... for some place I could drive off the road and just end it all. Why would you do that? Dad, you're scaring me. I have been such a fool. Dad, tell me what happened. I just found out that one of your brothers isn't... he isn't... I am so angry I can barely think straight. It's okay. Just talk to me. Remember when I wrecked my motorcycle and, and nobody could find your mother? Yeah, she was at some convention. She was with your, your brother's father. She's been having an affair with him for over 17 years. Last night we had a fight and she told me he wasn't mine. I raised that boy like my own. I have supported your mom from one health crisis after another and all the time she was... Dad, I am so sorry. You'll get through this. Just promise me you won't do anything stupid. Promise me. My dad's strong body had been crushed in that accident a year before, and now his heart was crushed, and I felt helpless to fix it. I wanted to help him, but I had enough troubles of my own. How come there's nothing to eat in this refrigerator? I don't know, John. You tell me why there's no food. I'm raising a baby, so it's not like I can support our family. Don't even go there. I'll have lots of money next week. Okay, fine. What about money for groceries and for the party? What party? Sean's birthday, remember? He's two years old. He doesn't even know what a birthday is. Did you buy him a gift yet? No. That's your job. My job, huh? Well, it's hard to buy him a birthday gift if I have no money. I told you, I'm picking up a big shipment tomorrow. Biggest one yet. Next week, after I meet all my customers, we'll be rolling in the dough, and you can buy him whatever he wants. Where are you getting these drugs? The less you know, the better. It better not be out of state, because if you get caught bringing drugs across state lines, it's a federal crime. You know that. And those prison sentences are much longer. What happens to your son and me if you get arrested? Relax. You have nothing to worry about. My suppliers, close by. Don't you dare lie to me. I'm not lying. Just stop badgering me. Are you expecting someone? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. My friend Rachel needed a place to crash for a few nights, so I told her she could stay Rachel? here. Rachel? The woman you had an affair with a year ago is knocking on my door? Yeah. What's the big deal? Did it ever cross your mind to ask me what I wanted? Knock, knock. Anybody home? Hey, Rachel, come on in. Candy and I were just talking about you. Hey, Candy. Thanks for letting me hang here. I promise, promise it'll only be a week. Or two. Two weeks? Sure. Whatever John wants. 
just in time for our son's birthday party. I can't wait to see what gift his dad got him. Yeah, yeah, it's a big surprise. Oh, I'm sure it is. I gotta get going, so I'll catch up with you ladies after my trip. You forgot to leave me some money for groceries. Wouldn't be a birthday party without cake and ice cream. Here's a couple of 20s. I need the rest for gas money. Hey, what's eating your husband? He gets that way before one of his business trips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> business? As in picking up a drug shipment? <laughs> Don't look surprised, Candy. I know what he's up to. So, when's this big birthday party? Tomorrow night. Well, that can't happen without his dad being here. What do you mean? I mean, it's going to take him two days just to drive to New York City. New York? You're sure? New York City? Yeah. I mean, he told me yesterday. That's where he's going. That's where his new supplier is. Didn't you know that? I always wondered what would be the final straw that made me leave him. And that was it. Lying and putting my family in jeopardy was the moment I decided enough was enough. I told Rachel she could stay as long as she wanted for all I cared. I had had enough and was taking the baby with me. It took me 30 minutes to pack what little I had. I took my son and walked out that door and never looked back. You did what? I'm leaving him, Peggy. All the drug dealing, the swing parties, all of it. I'm done with all of it. So don't try and talk me into staying with him. Why would I do that? I've been telling you he was dangerous from the day you met him. Yeah, I know. But I was too stupid to admit you were right. Where are you going to go? You are welcome to stay here, but there's not much room. I'm going to my parents. Maybe they've gotten their act together. They're managing a motel in upstate New York. They'll have a room I can use until I sort all this out. What can I do? What do you need? Pray for me. My life's a mess. I've done so many terrible things. We all have. All of us are sinners who need to repent of our sins and believe in Jesus as our Savior. My sins. God loves you, Candy. That's why his son died for our sins on a cross. Maybe he died for you, but nobody could love me after all the mistakes I've done. I'm sure God hates me. I'm sure he never wants to hear my voice again. That's not true. Don't ever believe that lie. He loves you, Candy. God made you with a purpose, and he can save you from this pit you're fallen in. All you have to do is trust him. Just talk to Jesus and ask him to forgive you. I've got to go. The baby's crying. Thank you for wanting to help me. Just be careful driving and pull over if you need to. There's a winter storm hitting the East Coast, okay? Did you hear me? Can't? And so began my journey from Florida to New York to my parents' motel. By the time I reached Virginia, the rain had started to turn to sleet, and then the snow began. I did my best to keep Sean entertained while I tried to keep up with traffic. Just before West Virginia, my windshield defroster decided to stop working. So every 20 minutes, I'd have to stop, get out, and scrape the ice off. Exhaust fumes were seeping through the holes in the floorboard, so I cracked open the window for fresh air. I had to force myself to stay awake and keep my eyes on the road. Somewhere in Pennsylvania, I reached my limit. I knew I had to pull off and find a motel. Can I help you? How much is a room? It's just my baby and me. Sixty dollars. Oh, that's more than I can afford. Thanks, anyway. Where are you going? You won't find any other motels cheaper, trust me. Okay, if I just use your parking lot tonight? In this storm? (laughs) That's crazy. Where are you heading? Upstate New York, where my parents live. And I'll tell you what. I'll give you a room for 20. You and your boy will have a warm place to sleep, and tomorrow the roads will be clear. That work for you? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Once I got Sean settled, I fell into the bed, exhausted. As I drifted to sleep, dear Peggy's words ran through my mind over and over. God made you with a purpose. He can save you from this pit you've fallen in. All you have to do is trust him. 
I had one last thought before I finally fell asleep. But how can I be sure that God really loves me? Join us again next week when we'll hear the conclusion of Candace's story. Listening friend, like Candy, you may be going through a storm in your own life, a hardship so heavy that you see no way out. No matter what wrongs you have done, God wants a relationship with you. That's why he sent his one and only son into our world. It's his gift to you. God is ready to hear your prayer and adopt you into his family. The first step always begins with asking God to forgive your sins and believing that Jesus took the punishment you deserved when he died on the cross. The next step is to find a Bible-believing church where you can be discipled and explore how God has uniquely designed you to love others into a deeper relationship with Him. If you need help in making this crucial decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so Send us your questions, and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. Keep an ear out because the winner of our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast will be announced next week right here on the podcast. We're excited to send out this beautiful scripture plaque with Lamentations 325 to our special winner. And after that, we'll start a new drawing for a new plaque to give everyone else a chance to win one of these great reminders of God's Word. And next time... How come there's nothing to eat in this refrigerator? I'm raising a baby, so it's not like I can support our family. Don't even go there. I'm picking up a big shipment tomorrow. Biggest one yet. After I meet my customers, we'll be rolling in the dough and you can buy him whatever he wants. Where are you getting these drugs? Relax, you have nothing to worry about. Candace Talbot escaped a troubled home only to end up a troubled single mom. When I learned that my husband had lied to me about his drug dealing, I packed my bags and left with my son. The woman in our story had made a lot of bad decisions and desperately wanted a new life. Well, it looks like I've gotten myself into another jam. So what's next? This is the story of how she overcame those setbacks and found the one she'd always longed for. I never knew God had created me to love so many people. Don't miss part two of the true testimony of Candace Talbot, all on the next Unshackled. Heard in part one of the true story of Candace Talbot were Mara Kate Burns, Lisa Keefe, Tom Geich, Cheryl Galemo, and Demetrius Troy. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Recording and audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Scott Kirk. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.